Hi, I'm Jack Koenig with Graco Industrial Lubrication Equipment, and today I'm going to demonstrate how to wire a dry contact switch to the M12 ports on a G-Series pump. But first, before we get into what this video does cover, I'm going to reach back and grab a few sensors to show you what this video does not cover. Many of you are familiar with the 24K414 switch. This is not a dry contact switch. This is a PNP transistor-based switch, so it needs three wires. We're not talking about this today. Also, the older 24K415 proximity switch requires three wires, not the subject of this video. And the new solid state switches that actually replace that switch. Also, the name solid state implies that it's a transistor. That means it's a three wire connection and that's not what this video is about. We are gonna be talking about the two wire connection used by dry contact switches including some of our newer pressure switches, some older proc switches, some older pressure switches, and even this guy, this old cycle switch. I'm gonna show you how to wire this up today. So now let's take a closer look at some of the connectors and cables that we use and how they connect to the G-Series pumps. To prepare for some of these installations, you're gonna to wanna to grab a few tools. These are some precision screwdrivers that's what these are too. They're just a different style, kind of a, a longer form, but both of these have a little spinning head on them for better control, so you can kind of work them like that. But then you also want a more standard screwdriver because sometimes you'll need to remove a cover or something. And then of course, a wire cutter and wire stripper, and don't forget your safety glasses. Just to clarify at the beginning, a dry contact switch is really just a two wire connection where all you're doing is making and breaking a circuit. So I have my multimeter here and I'm gonna do the process of ohming it out as they call it. When I close this circuit, it just makes that beeping sound. So now the two wires from the sensor, we can hook these up and now I have this switch wired normally open which means when it's at rest, the circuit's open. And when I press this plunger in, it's gonna close the circuit. So there you go. That's the point of a dry contact switch is that it's just a two wire connection. So even though this cable has four conductors in it, we're only using two of them to create our sensor circuit. Now let's take a look under the hood of this switch and see how it gets wired. In this case, I'm using cable 124300, which is a very standard M12 cable. We've been selling this cable since the G3 was launched, so a lot of people have these on the shelf. This is a part you may not have seen. I borrowed this from one of the pumps that we sell through PMG called the Apex Oil Pump, and it's part number 260067. It starts out as a pretty big opening, but if you bottom out the, the nut on that cable gland, it will hold it firmly and it can be added to these switches. This switch is part number 557781 and you probably will recognize these switches on a lot of older lubrication systems. They're used in a lot of places on Trayvon systems but today I'm just going to be discussing how to wire it up as a cycle switch for a divider valve. So here now we can see the four leads coming out of the flying lead end of the 124300 cable. We've got brown and white, which are not gonna be used. And then we've got black and blue, which are the two that you use for any dry contact switch that you wanna to wire to the G3. So now brown and white not being used, you can actually clip the white off because it doesn't connect to anything inside the G3. So it's a completely dead conductor. But the brown one, a lot of people do just clip them off and normally it's fine, but there is voltage on this brown wire and if it happened to touch one of these other conductors, it could actually damage the G3 pump. So the best practice here is to tape off the brown wire anytime that you're wiring up a dry contact switch because the brown wire isn't being used. But otherwise, common, normally open, and normally closed 
are clearly labeled on here. My wires are blocking your view of this, but it does say common, norm open, norm closed, so you can clearly see what terminals you're using. And most people are gonna just use common and normally open. For a cycle switch, you could use normally closed, but just for the sake of consistency, all the pressure switches have to be wired normally open. So go ahead and just do common and normally open most of the time so that it stays straight in your head that that's how you wire these up. But it's that simple. And one other point is that you don't use a precision screwdriver on this one. Both these terminals here are big screws and then even the screws that hold the cover on are going to be a little bit too big for your precision screwdriver. So that's why you want to bring a normal screwdriver with you as well. This is a pretty common pressure switch that we use with grease systems. The NPT version we sell here in the U.S. is 24N181. There is also a BSP version, 24N180. They wire up the same, so you can watch this video for either one of those. And it's going to be the same thing again for the wires, blue and black, taped off brown. And on this one, I already cut the white wire off, so we can toss that. When you open the box that this comes in, there's going to be the manual from Barksdale in that box. And if you open the book to the middle where the staples are, there is a wiring diagram in the box with the switch. I'm gonna throw something up on the screen here now to show you a little more clearly. But the big thing is that we want to use common, which is terminal one. And again, we wanna wire this normally open. So terminal three is the other one we're gonna use. So we just need to use the blue and black on terminals one and three. Any of these wiring projects can get frustrating because of how these newer connectors have such tiny numbers on them. So one thing you can do on this guy is to flip it over to this end and the numbers are a little bit bigger here. You may wanna have a flashlight with you or do this in direct sunlight where you have good lighting, maybe a workbench where you have good lighting if that's possible. But this is terminal one here. And on this side, if I get close enough to this guy, I actually can see a little number one right here. But then number three on this thing, actually, you can read the two over here, but the three is actually really hard to read the, the molding or whatever boogered up that number three, so it's kind of hard to even see it. But one thing about terminal three is it's opposite of the ground, and the ground is just that straight, which over here is your straight piece. So it's a little easier to see here that ground is straight and then these U-shaped or channel-shaped terminals are the one, two, and three. So with this being ground, you know that three is opposite of it. So now when we rotate it over, here's the ground and here's number three. And as far as the blue and black arrangement, it doesn't matter if you reverse these because with a dry contact circuit, all you're doing is making and breaking the circuit. So when it makes the circuit, it gets its signal and when it breaks the circuit, that's opening up the circuit again. One other thing I wanted to say about this, putting this back together with the wire in can be kind of tricky because the wire comes straight in and goes right over the hole that the screw needs to come through later. So sometimes it's actually nice to leave a little bit of extra wire and kind of curl it around so it forces that to the side when it first comes in there. And then when you put this back together, it sometimes will make it easier to go in there and then put your screw in later. One thing you wanna pay attention to when you're putting these back in is the orientation of that ground because you can turn this any way you want to. So when you are done, your wire can point any direction. So in this case, I want my wire or cable to go to the side. So I'm just gonna say that the side is the right way. Make sure the gasket goes back on slide that down put it into the screw and this is another one where a precision screwdriver isn't probably big enough but we just want to tighten that up and once that's on tight the gasket will seal up nicely and keep the moisture out incidentally this is how you adjust one of these that's also covered in that instruction manual that comes with the switch so there we go normally open pressure switch In this next segment, we're gonna look at several switches that come with the cable on the switch already and how they would connect to the M12 connectors that we sell separately. There are two M12 connectors that we commonly sell for the end of the wire that connects to the G3. We have 
the 124594, which each of these are using the 124594. And then the bigger one, the 124595, which is this one and also the one here in my hand. 124595 has a fifth terminal on it where you can actually hook up five wires to this particular connector. That's not why we sell it. We only ever use three of the wires, so we don't even use the fourth one. Like I was saying, the white wire doesn't even have any function. So anyway, don't worry about this fifth conductor. We never actually use that. The bigger thing is that you can modify the opening in this guy because it has this rubber piece here that you can modify by cutting out the middle. And it's got some divisions in there that allow you to do that. And in fact, I had to do that on this wire because it was too thick to use with the 124594. In general though, I like the 124594 because I find it to be a little bit easier to work with. It's just that it has a limit in its size where when you get into a bigger, thicker wire like this, you have to use the 124595. And that's what I did here. Let's take a closer look. This is the 563485 proximity switch. And it comes with three wires. One is a ground wire, and the other two are for the normally open and common wires. And we're going to use pins three and four here again. It's just now we don't have a blue and black wire to tell us which ones are pins three and four. So it's just a matter of getting in here with your magnifying glass or some other way to zoom in on these. One other thing though is if you look at this end, the keyway is always by one and two. So the three and four are gonna be the ones opposite of that key. And when we flip it around and follow the key back, we can tell that this is one and two, and then this is three and four. There's another trick that I use sometimes. When I'm in the field and I can't see something, I open my camera on my cell phone and zoom in and sometimes I'll even take a picture. If I have to turn my flash on, I'll do that. But sometimes just zooming in really largely as well will do the trick. So let's see if I can demonstrate this and actually catch it on the screen. Here we go. So now I can kind of see the numbers there etched on the, or raised up on the terminals. So now that we've located pins three and four, we can actually clip off this ground wire. I'm gonna leave it there for now because I might actually use this switch for something else after this video. But these pieces just all screw together and the other components here need to just slide down and we wanna get that reverse nut in there. You probably wanna throw a crescent wrench on here just to get it tight and make sure you've got everything nice and stiff so that you can't pull that cable out and you're not straining the wires themselves and also you're gonna keep moisture out that way. So now this is ready to plug into the G3. The last thing we're gonna look at today is the 557830. There are two similar pressure switches, 557829 and 557828. They all wire up the same. Right on here, it clearly says you've got common white, normally open red, and normally closed black. We want this to be wired up as normally open. So let's look inside here real quick. Here's the black wire. This could be clipped off, but I wanna use this pressure switch for other things a different day. But typically you're gonna just clip that black off. It doesn't need to be taped off. There's no harm in just letting it hang there. And then once you locate the same way again, the, the key is over here on pins one and two, or between pins one and two rather. So three and four are opposite it. So when you come over here, you can locate it that way, or you can use a magnifying glass or that trick with the camera to find pins three and four, but just red and white to pins three and four. And if they get backwards with dry contact switches, it doesn't matter. The only trick with this one is that this rubber seal here starts out like this and you have to punch out the middle piece to get it to fit over this cable. But then after that, it just all goes together like that other one. And again, you wanna clip this wire. I'm just bending it back for the moment. And we're gonna thread it all together. And when this all gets tightened up, you wanna just make sure that you put a wrench on there and get it nice and tight so that you're not putting tension on those wires. 
So that's all that's to it. This is really a very simple subject. You're just wiring up two wires and it's gonna be either the blue and black wire or just pins three and four and you look at your wiring schematic for your switch itself. Thanks for checking out this video. Hopefully you found the information useful and helpful. If you have any questions about Graco pumps, accessories, or any other Graco product, please contact us. We are always happy to hear from you.